What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason and Joe here with an album review. Today we're talking about the new album from MGMT called Loss of Life. That is the fifth studio album from the duo. Last one was 2018's Little Dark Age. Uh, so it's been a minute. And uh, yeah, how you, how you feeling about it? Well, not loving it. I do not like the direction they went in with this. And just to make sure, I went back, I listened to Little Dark Age, which I, I know I'd listened to in the past, but I didn't have it highly rated on my sheet, even though it's from a year I don't particularly care much for. But I, I was impressed by Little Dark Age, and then even less impressed by the direction in the new album. Uh, it's kind of like, I don't know, I mean, they basically take out like all their glitchy beats, like the jumpy bass, the, you know, the cool odd chord sequences. And they go in this kind of mediocre indie rock pop kind of direction that reminds me of like the national. I don't know if it's quite as boring as the last couple national albums, but throughout the album, I was just really struck by how little like interesting things were getting through, like the clavichord or clavinet or whatever it is on Bubblegum Dog was the highlight of the album for me. And, you know, there's a couple instances of that like MGMT chord showing up uh, in I Wish I Was Joking. But other than that, you know, I mean, the singing is nice, the production's fine, um, but just the, the actual tracks, the, the songs themselves just didn't do much for me at all. The, the first track sounds like a Flaming Lips, like D-side, kind of pretentious and lame. Mother Nature sounds like Blur or Oasis. Like it's a really obvious like Britpop kind of thing. And that's fine. Like it's a, a pretty decent song, but I'm not really into MGMT or like the Britpop stuff. That's not really what they've done before. Dancing in Babylon. I thought it was a cute duet with Christine and the Queens. Uh, it's like uh, Up Where We Belong for the indie set, maybe. It's got some like 80s little special effects in there. Uh, people on the street, maybe like a little talk talk feel. It's got like that uh, fretless bass sound. And nothing really happens though until the swell at the end. So it's exactly like all post rock songs. Uh, last couple tunes, just kind of moderately interesting indie rock. Nothing jumped out at me. I think, you know, as far as their direction, I think it's a bad direction for them. Definitely their worst album since the self-titled. And I'm not like the great, you know, biggest MGMT fan in the world, but comparatively to Little Dark Age, this is just really, really... Four. I'm doing three stars and it's a light three stars for this one. All right. Well, yeah, this is a kind of a I found taking notes on this difficult It because it's like I found it a little hard to describe. It still has a little bit of the psych sound that they're somewhat known for, especially on um, the Congratulations album. A little folk rock coming in, a lot more acoustic guitar than we're used to from MGMT. I think ultimately, though, it's hard to find a good descriptor of this album because it's pretty middle of the road. So I agree with you in that respect. Although I am i don't think I'm as down on it. I think the songs are still decent. Yeah, it's just less stylized than their records normally are. It, it, it feels pretty relaxed and pretty comfortable. It doesn't seem like they're trying too hard, but maybe a little bit doesn't feel like they're trying hard enough. I don't know. It's it's weird. It's I think the songs are somewhat catchy. There's still good melodies. I like their vocals. I think the production is still on point. People talk a lot about like how they jump around like from record to record and like they don't seem to have like a real direction and they're kind of shooting in the dark every time out. Uh, you know, the first record has those super like catchy synth pop bangers. Those those singles were huge. And then you get to Congratulations, which is a bit more out there, psych, less hooky, little dark age, more more synthy again. To me, I don't think the records are all that different. Like, yeah, there's there are differences, and and but but sometimes people talk about MGMT like each record is almost like a totally different band, and I don't hear that. I think 
I believe David Fridman has produced or not produced, but mixed all of their albums. So I think there is a sonic thing holding them all together. And I think that is still present here. He he did mix this record as well. Uh, I just think it's musically less interesting, even though the songwriting and the melodies are still pretty decent. I think they even themselves called it like 20% adult contemporary, uh, which I think is is pretty accurate. People in the streets, kind of mid-tempo, ballady, not a lot happening. At the same time, when I'm listening to it, I kind of like it. I think it is a good song. Nothing to, to declare, I think, might be my favorite song on the record, at least my favorite of the singles. But it's, you know, it's pretty low key. Like, it's an, it's an understated tune, especially for a single. Uh, the vocals on Nothing Changes kind of remind me a little bit of Secret Machines. I Wish I Was Joking, I think is great, has a moody soundscape underneath. I think you just kind of, you expect those type of like earworms that are relentless from, from MGMT, or, or at least like, if not that, then like the wild psychedelic kaleidoscope of sounds and stuff. And this isn't really either of those things. You mentioned the Flaming Lips. I, I think, yeah, that that's definitely all over this record, probably uh, due to David Fridman again. Uh, it was also produced by Daniel Lowe Patton, uh, one of Tricks Point Never, Patrick Wimberly, uh, the other half of Chairlift, I think Brian Burton produced a track or two or something as well. Um, yeah, so I don't know. It's, I think, in the lower half of their discography. But I also don't think it's bad. Like, I listened to it all the way through, and I thought it was, you know, pretty enjoyable. You get some guest appearances, Christine and the Queens, Nels Klein's on a track, Sean Lennon, Britta Phillips, others as well. I don't know. Three and a half for me. I think it's it's a, a fine listen. I like it, but it's not exciting. It's not like some people are talking about it like like it's a five star record, and and I don't see that. Um, it's fine. It's good. I like it, but uh, how much will I listen to it? Especially with everything else we've got going on, probably not a lot. So three and a half for me. Uh, yeah. Were you looking forward to the album when it came out? Were you expecting a lot? Or I, I didn't hear any of the singles at all. So I went in it completely cold. So that may sort of go into my review of sort of just being kind of taken aback by the sound of it overall. I don't know. Uh, MGMT is a weird band in that I've really enjoyed their discography for the most part. But like they never became like a band that I would be like waiting for, even though I love Little Dark Age. I think Little Dark Age was in my top 20 of 2018. And I still just <laughs> my level of excitement, even still after that, didn't only get so high. And then I heard the singles and I was kind of like lukewarm on the singles and was like, eh, I'll check it out. But I, I think, you know, those early singles were incredible. Uh, Congratulations was super interesting. Self-titled was kind of a dud, Little Dark Age. Great comeback, return to form, just like everything you could have hoped. Great great songs, great hooks, great sounds. And then this one is kind of like, it's a little bit of a, it feels a little like the self-titled to me, where it's just kind of in this middle ground where it's not the worst thing you could listen to, but there's much better stuff out there. All right, uh, let us know what you think of this record, if you love it. Uh, or if you're feeling more like us, kind of middle of the road on it, uh, let us know in the comments. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. Hit the bell for notifications. Uh, check the video description for our social media and our Patreon if you'd like to check that out. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.